This week on Create with Chidex, something fishy took place and I'll be revealing it in just a few seconds. I made a fishy themed cake. <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> Welcome back to Create with Chidex, I'm Chidima and in today's video I'll be showing you how I made a salmon dish themed cake. So I'll show you how I made the salmon portions, the delicious looking creamy gooey sauce and also the side of potato slices. So if you'd like to know how I made the cake, stick around to the end and I hope you enjoyed the video. Before I go on, I would like to say a few things. Um, I've been so amazed at the wonderful love and support being shown to me by my subscribers of late. It's um, really difficult making these uh, cake videos, but you guys make me feel like it's all worthwhile. So thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider joining the family. Consider subscribing. And also don't forget to click on the notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos. So with all of that said, come with me and we'll get this cake started. I started out by coloring my modeling chocolate pink using the sugar flare debu gel color in pink. After coloring and kneading, the modeling chocolate should look something like this. A very light pinky beige color. As I had achieved the desired color, I set out to roll out the modeling chocolate using a rolling pin. So I'm rolling it out into a strip. I also put down some corn flour on my surface and on the rolling pin to prevent the modeling chocolate from sticking to them. The strip that I rolled out was about 22 cm wide, so I cut it into two strips like so. Then using my ruler, I measured and cut one of the strips down to about 17 cm wide. I also rolled out some white fondant, very thin, a lot thinner than the modeling chocolate I rolled previously. Then using the pink strips as templates, I cut out similar sized strips from the white fondant. Now that I've got all four strips ready, I'll rub some vegetable fat on the pink ones. Then I'll place the two white strips on top of the pink ones, like so. Leaving me with just two strips instead of the original four. Next, I'll roll out a cylindrical shaped piece of pink modeling chocolate, place it on the shorter strip, then roll it and cut it, like so. I'll then place the piece on the strip, then roll and cut it again. After that, I'll start cutting small different sized strips from my large strip and then using some vegetable fat, I'll glue them to the piece I made from my shorter strip. I glued three of the cut pieces on one side and now I'll glue two pieces on the opposite side. Next, almost similar to what I did at the beginning, I'll fold and cut out a piece from what's left of the strip. 
then I'll cut out smaller square pieces and fold and attach them like so next I'll glue the two pieces together with some vegetable fat turn it such that the side faces up flatten it with my palm and cut it into two then I'll flip each of my two pieces to the side and cut them into two again leaving me with a total of four pieces after cutting each one I'll try to flatten the resulting pieces without messing with the pattern already created when I was done I wrapped them in parchment paper and set them aside in order to move on to my cake I've got a piece of cake here and using a template which I created with cardboard paper I'll cut out two pieces that are shaped almost like teardrops with a small V-shaped opening at the narrow end of the shape I'm now cutting out the second cake piece now that I have my four pieces of cake I'm going to split each one into two then I'll coat all four pieces with some buttercream I've got all four pieces of cake coated with buttercream so I'll now chill them in the freezer for 30 minutes next I'll apply one more coat of buttercream and chill the cakes again for 20 minutes while the cakes were in the freezer I used the scissors to cut my template into two then using a small rolling pin I rolled out one of the pink and white pieces which I made earlier on. Notice that I'm rolling it only in one direction so I don't mess up with the pattern. Then I used my newly created template to cut out two pieces. Next I rolled out a piece of some of the pink modeling chocolate I colored at the beginning. I'm placing it on top of one of the cake pieces. I cut it down to size like so. After covering the top of the cake piece, I covered the two sides with the pieces I cut out using my newly created cardboard template. Then I cut them down to size as well. After covering the top and the sides of the cake, I'm going to use my fondant tool to mark out those stripes that you usually see on salmon just on top of the cake when I'm done with this one using the same process which I've shown I'm going to finish off the rest of the salmon cake portions off camera and then I'll come back after that to continue with the next process to make the lemon slices I've covered half of a real lemon in cling film and using this I'll press down on one of the lemon green fondant balls here to make a flat circle which I'll then trim to size Next, I took a small piece of parchment paper and folded it over my fondant tool to get a teardrop shape. Then I cut a slant at one side of the paper 
to keep the paper from making unnecessary texture. After this, using the piece of paper with the slanted side down, I started making the lemon pulp texture, starting from the center and going around the circle. When I was done creating the texture, I cut the circle into 8 segments. Then I pushed and joined them back together. And using my fondant tool, I rounded up the edges of the joints. After that, I used the fondant tool with the rounded bottom to create a hole at the center of the segment. Next, I rolled out a long tube of white fondant. And then using some vegetable fat, I stuck it around the circle. To stick it together properly and at the same time create the outer texture of a lemon, I used the brand new toothbrush to push them together. I made four lemon slices following the same process. And then using my fondant extruder, I piped out extremely thin fondant strips and place them in between the segments of all four lemon slices. When I was done attaching the fondant strips between all of the segments, I painted the surface of the four slices with some corn syrup mixed with vodka. The four lemon slices were made the day before so that they could dry properly before being painted. After the slices had dried completely, I painted the outer edges with yellow edible gel color mixed with vodka. I also tinted my corn syrup and vodka mixture with a tiny bit of yellow food color and then dab this lightly on the slices. Next, I painted a very light coat of orange gel food color on top of the salmon cake pieces. For the potato slices, I mixed in Tylos powder into some creamy yellow fondant and rolled out two oval shaped balls which I cut into slices. I placed these slices on a wooden board and burnt the edges slightly with my blue touch. Next, I arranged the fondant potato slices alongside the salmon cake portions on the plate. To make the herbs, I painted both sides of an edible wafer paper sheet, left it to dry for a bit, then using the scissors, I cut it into tiny pieces. For the creamy sauce, I made some chocolate ganache with equal parts of chocolate and double cream, then I dip in the color a bit using a tiny drop of edible blue color. Finally, I poured the sauce over the salmon cake portions. Sprinkled on the herbs. Then I placed the lemon slices on the cake portions. And there you have it. A yummy looking salmon dish cake just ready to be feasted on. Now I'm going to feast on my yummy fish dinner. <laughs> I'm just kidding. As usual, I'm going to cut the cake.
so we've now come to the end of this video thank you so much guys for staying till the end and i'll see you in my next video bye